Thank you. All right. Hey, um, thank you everybody for coming this evening on this beautiful, warm, summery winter's day that we seem to be having out there. It's hotter than Auckland. Hopefully, it's actually. We're trying to convince them to stay, you see. So. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you firstly to Kay and the staff here at the uh, library for hosting us. It's really, really great. Um, I've just got a wee speech prepared from our publishing team up in Auckland. I'm Jeremy from Scholastic. Um, we're very proud to have published this book. Um, as you've seen earlier, it's just actually a beautiful publication. And, um, it's a really great read too, so thank you. Um, so this is, just, this is straight from Lynette, our, um, from publishing up in Auckland. So thanks to the Dunedin Libraries for hosting us here today to celebrate the publication of a picture book that we hope will find a special place in the hearts and lives of both the young and the not so young across this beautiful land of ours. The Song of Cowrie was written by Melinda and illustrated by Dominique Ford and reached hold in the Tenereo by Nadia Roberts and designed by Vida Vita Kelly. It was nurtured and guided on its journey from raw text to emerging sketches and draft designs with full colour art for final production by the publishing team at Scholastic. As you can tell, this is a very special book and had many loving parents, but it all began with the rich and visually evocative and heart-stirring words Melinda wrote. The Song of Cowrie is a joy to read aloud, but it is also a joy to discover and rediscover Quietly and just in, perhaps just in a secret place beneath the shade of a leafy green perfect on a day like today. Um, it's been a pri privilege to work with Melinda and Dominique on this book, and we extend congratulations and best wishes to them both from the team of Scholastic. Thank you very much. No worries. Pass it over to you. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, and many thanks to Scholastic for their continued faith in me and the special efforts we've made over this book in particular. Um, it looks amazing. Uh, Illustrator Dominic Ford has created a work of art on every page. And the um, designer, Peter Kelly, has pulled everything together in the best possible way. I feel very lucky and very happy with the result. Um, thanks too to Dunedin Library. Um, so thank you for providing this wonderful venue and to my fellow writer Tony Roxborough um, for being my one man with the catering and the wheels um, and Philip. Um, um, you get around the even pretty well without a car until you have to transport bottles of wine, juice, food and speakers. But I knew you were a lot to say that, didn't you? Um, and thank you all for coming along to help me celebrate the launch of this book. Uh, my time as the University of Otago College of Education, Creative New Zealand Children's Writer and Residence here in Dunedin is nearly at an end. Um, I only knew a few people when I arrived just over five months ago, but everyone has been so welcoming and generous and kind that I felt like a part of the community right from the start. I've appreciated the friendship shown to me. Thank you very much. So, the Song of Cowrie. The seed of this story lay dormant for a long time. From the first inspiration to the final draft was probably more than 10 years. Fitting, I guess, for it to be slow growing like a cowrie tree. But like cowrie, I think in the end it grew strong and tall. These giants of our New Zealand flora are an important part of our natural history and ones that we should be respecting and protecting for future generations. Now, one of the perks of being children's writer in residence here this year has been meeting the other University of Otago Fellows. And I was very fortunate, especially with the very talented Mozart fellow, Jeremy Mayle, who was keen to work collaboratively with the rest of us. He has written music to accompany the story, and I'm now going to play for you, I hope, um, the song of Cowrie, with words by me, illustrations by Dominic Ford, and music by Jeremy Mayle. <laughs>
From a cloak of mist, young Cowrie raised his arms to the warming sun, and the sap inside him stirred. His roots dug deep into the ground. He felt the land beneath him, and the sky above him, and the life inside him, and he was content. Years passed, and Kauri grew tall and vigorous. At first he lived alone in the valley. He spoke with the earth, but the great earth was busy with its own concerns. elsewhere and different forests grow of glass and steel and concrete. Men admired the strength of these new forests and climbed these new trees to look not at the world beyond but at the one they had made, 
they painted pictures of trees and admired their beauty and their own skill and art. And the forest and the valley was left to its own devices. Years passed. Kauri grew old, his heart full of all he had ever seen and all he had ever heard. He felt the years like a heavy burden. Birds slowly returned to the forest, carrying the weightlessness of the air with them. When they perched in his branches and burst into song, he felt better. And when the birds flew away with their freedom and their lightness, Kauri's heart would sink again. He had loved the earth, but now he yearned to know something new. His roots were weary, and they began to release their grasp on the rocks and dirt. He reached his arms up as he used to reach for the sun, and began to sing his own song, the song of his life. Thank you. 